welcome again friends uh, we are talking about gene mapping or genetic mapping we have seen the introduction about genetic mapping and we have also seen uh, the importance of genetic markers and what are their functions and we have seen uh, the linkage mapping which is a type of genetic mapping and we have seen some uh, feature of linkage mapping and what uh, are the importance of linkage mapping but we also know there is a drawback of linkage mapping is that linkage mapping is giving us uh, the uh, relation of two genes or uh, the presence of a gene with response to another okay so it is not directly telling us where the single or gene is exactly present right so to solve this problem we need to rely on a different type of mapping approach it is called the physical mapping uh, in this kind of physical mapping uh, whole genome mapping is possible or the exact location of a gene can be determined okay so physical mapping and this physical mapping is also much more complicated than linkage mapping linkage mapping can be derived by just looking at the recombination frequencies and parent frequencies but this gene physical mapping can rely on many different critical techniques and some molecular biology approach to find out okay but it is much more reliable because we can directly link a gene with a chromosomal position now in this physical mapping there are uh, physical mapping of different types it could be uh, called cytogenetic mapping okay or it could be called a framework mapping or sometimes it is also called as uh, what we can say uh, full length uh, mapping of genome or uh, say this physical mapping of it could be uh, I have told you that it could be of two different kind a framework mapping or it could be cytogenetic mapping nowadays the cytogenetic mapping is much more common cytogenetic mapping okay now there are different techniques of the cytogenetic mapping now in the physical mapping the basic fundamental of this physical mapping is uh, what we do in the physical mapping we'll take up small segments of genes so basic idea is like that genes uh, segments are aligned in this way like that and then we look for the overlapping regions for example these are the overlapping regions right so this is overlapping this is another overlap so these are the overlapping regions that we can get by getting this overlapping regions we can construct we can construct the the whole sequence of the gene this is what is called the physical mapping okay construction of a whole sequence of a gene a construction of a whole chromosome placing different genes in that chromosome by just overlapping the sequences so we are actually physically place those genes in chromosome and to look for that this gene is re, uh, just right after that this gene is right after that or left of that like that okay now this kind of physical mapping approaches are different so for the physical mapping remember we need many genes lot of genes that are placed sequentially so sequential arrangement of the genes are very important for physical mapping so where are the genes present we don't know the genes we just know the name of the genes the markers g1 g7 g12 g20 for example we don't know where the genes are present and how they are arranged so the Im most important part is to arrange them sequentially so the sequential arrangement is the most important part sequential arrangement is the most crucial part of this physical mapping so for that we need many genes we need many genes to produce the framework so if we produce those framework by placing one genes after another we can get a map those kind of maps are called framework map framework map of an organism for example utilizing the human genome project there are different genetic sequencing uh, nucleotide sequencing approaches are utilized and then combining everything together we get a framework of the whole human genome so it we call them the framework map of human genome okay 
Now, as this is telling us the exact location of the genes, it is going to be much more difficult. There are several approaches of physical mapping, several different approaches. The three most important approaches I am going to talk, and we will be talking those three approaches in our future videos in detail. So, those things are first, uh, these are called somatic cell hybridization. mapping somatic cell hybridization mapping is a very very important technique which can be utilized to map the location of two genes or location of a single gene it, it is with the help of a genetic marker now remember in this case as we are dealing with a vast amount of genes and vast amount of region vast region of chromosome we cannot take only one genetic marker as example we need to take many genetic markers one visible, one biochemical and molecular. We need to take many different types of genetic marker also. We cannot rely on one type of marker. We cannot rely on simply the visible marker. Visible markers are easy to visualize, easy to get obtained, but we cannot rely on them only. We need to take a variety, a vast variety, a majority of different type of markers. It could be biochemical, visible, molecular and different type of markers. And then finally utilize them to get the presence or placement of different genes in chromosome okay so somatic cell hybridization second important thing is radiation hybridization this two type of hybridization this radiation hybridization is much more similar uh, uh, to somatic cell hybridization a slight difference in this case we utilize radiation uh, to treat this uh, chromosome and finally get uh, those chromosome mapped okay and the third thing is totally different Flu fluorescent in situ hybridization okay there are also radiation and uh, radioactive in situ hybridization is also there. But nowadays, scientists are going to use fluorescent UV, uh, in situ hybridization in much more amount. So that's why I'm going to tell fluorescent in situ hybridization instead of radiation in situ hybridization. So these three are the major techniques which we can utilize to map genes using physical mapping. Now, in the future videos, we'll be talking about each of these techniques in detail. And you will be seeing what are the remarkable ways that genes can be mapped by utilizing these techniques. Now remember one thing, that in all aspects, we will be taking genetic markers. And the markers will never be of similar type. It, it must be a mixture of all markers, like a visible marker, chemical marker, molecular marker and all. Okay. And also, we are not depending upon a single gene. We are considering a whole bunch of genes, so we need to derive those things by comparing a lot of experiments together. So only a single experiment is never going to tell us where the genes are located. The confidence level of ours will increase if we are going to express it in much more experiments. So we need to look for thousands and thousands of different experimental setups of cell lining. We have cell lines, thousand different experiments, then we get the results and we are having softwares, bioinformatics softwares, biostatistics softwares and also we are having database of the human genome. If we are talking about human genome, we are having whole human genome sequenced. Now after getting the presence of two different type of genetic markers, we can locate them by just comparing the results with those database, right? So we need to rely on those things. So this uh, the actual goal of telling all these things uh, is that all of these things are not any single process. So not a single process can give us this physical mapping. We need to rely on many different type of processes and many different type of markers at the same time to get the result and we need to do and repeat these results again and again and then to make a derive a long amount of data and have a statistical analysis to give us a result and then we can tell that G1 is placed right after G7 or not. Okay, so that's it. In the future video, we'll be talking about somatic cell hybridization in detail. I hope this video will help you. Thank you.